afternoon ladies and gents and we are at Clough Fair near St Bartholomew's Hospital at the Rising Sun pub Sorry. Just, just down there. Um, a little bit of nasty gory history with this pub we're in body snatcher territory in the days before the anatomy act and what not were bought out Body snatchers used to hang out in this pub, and the doctors from St Bartholomew's Hospital, which is just over there, used to buy bodies for anatomy classes and things like that. So yeah, it was a it was a well known f thing amongst the medical students in in this area, and this was one of the little areas, one of the little pockets of body snatcher areas. That was just a little short. I hope you all found that little gory piece of uh, history interesting. Take care everyone and see you all soon. In modern times, if one of your family were to die, they would be buried in a cemetery and you'd expect them to stay there. Not unreasonable, you'd think, but 200 years ago, things were very different. This was the time of the body snatchers. Now, body snatchers were resurrectionists. They were people who might dig up a freshly buried corpse in order to sell that on to a medical school or a private anatomical teaching institute. Perhaps the most famous uh, people associated with the selling of corpses to anatomy medical schools were Burke and Hare. Burke and Hare found it much easier to murder people who were under the radar, people that no one really wanted, and consequently they could use their bodies fresh, deliver them to the medical school without any soil on, without any decomposition, and they got a really good price for those. Burke and Hare's murderous spree came to an end in, in Halloween on October 1828, uh, and they were taken to court and uh, one of them was hung. And this s sent a signal out to the rest of the country. It created a field change in attitudes to what people should do with the bodies of the dead. Everyone decided what was more important was that the living got the best treatment from their doctors and that that was given a higher priority over the corpses of the dead. So we find that in 1832, the Anatomy Act was introduced where it became legal for those who died in poor houses and hospitals and were not claimed by friends or relatives, their corpses could automatically be used by the private anatomical teaching institutes and the medical schools so that no one needed to be dug up from the ground anymore and the cemeteries could rest in peace. So what actually happened to the bodies that were sold to the medical schools? Excavated skeletal remains that we found from a number of sites, both hospital rubbish tips and also the cemeteries of poor houses and infirmaries across the country, often show how the bodies were physically sawn up and divided presumably so that different medical students can dissect different parts of the same body before it would have decomposed. Here we see a saw cut transversely across the lumbar vertebra, which would have divided the upper part of the body from the lower part of the body. And here is a cranium, which has a craniotomy cut circumferentially all the way around the top of the head. So this would have allowed the top part of the skull to be removed so that the brain could be inspected in situ. And here we can see the saw cuts used to amputate through the lower leg at the level of the tibia bone. And you can see how the saw cuts aren't all in parallel. They come in different angles, which makes us think this may have been a practice operation by someone who wasn't very good, who was training how to do an amputation in a corpse so that they would be faster and more efficient when they did one in real life on a live person. So the fact that different bodies were dissected by different medical students at different times means that once the dissection was finished and the remains could be reburied, the same parts of the same body weren't always available to be reburied together. So we may have a coffin of arms or a coffin of legs, or sometimes we would have the upper part of the body and the lower part of the body would be missing. And so they would put other material in there, such as dissected animal bones, or even rocks to balance out the coffin and make it feel like a complete body. So this is the first time that 
such a broad range of archaeological evidence for dissection and autopsy has been brought together in the same place and that allows us to analyse the meaning of the results in a much greater way. So thanks to the discoveries of the early anatomists, we've come to move towards our modern knowledge of how organs work and what normal anatomy is all about.